two goes down low. The 79 oh. Oh, gets caught up in it just at the very end. The 67, though, with Nathan Stanley makes it on through free and clear. He, Paul Ferdiani, and Larry Dickerson having a drag race back in the For one last attack, getting underneath him, not quite able to make it stick, having to lift once again. Oh, into exit of turn number four, down onto the front straightaway here. Who's going to win it with the drag race? It's going to be Timothy Pope. First three and four, 751 with a hefty lead here, about a half a car length as the one gets up into the wall with a run down. Hundred feet. It's gonna be a close one across the line. Yes, Garrett Wells made it three wide on the far outside lane, picking up spots left and right here as everybody fighting for every single spot we go. Coming, coming across the line, white flag. So here we go. Final lap. Hello and welcome everybody into some Sunday night racing action here as the Numb Thumbs Racing League Super Speedway Series takes on the uh, tricky and treacherous Talladega Super Speedway here tonight. We're just over two and a half miles separates the uh, yeah victors and their uh, spoils. So we're just going to have to wait and find out how everything unfolds here tonight as... Man, we got a full, full field all getting up, lined on up for uh, all the great race and action we have in store for you for 70 laps. Can't wait to get this one started, so let's get right on to it and get this thing kicked on off with the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red Bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave? And welcome back. As always, we have to say a huge proud thank you to the sponsors of the Numb Thumbs Racing League, such as Davidson Builders, the premier builders up there in the northern New Jersey area. Be sure to give them a shout out if you're looking to maybe do an extension on the house, do some in-home remodeling, or just changing out that kitchen sink. Get the professionals to do it and do it right the first time and looking all perfect and wonderful and everything works. Like, uh, yeah, just like that kitchen sink. They won't have any leaks in their sinks. So big thank you to Davidson Builders. And uh, be sure to contact them here today. Big thank you as well to DEP Graphics. Some phenomenal paint schemes in and out of that garage each and every single day. So be sure to get yourself a customized paint scheme and separate yourself from the rest of the field here from DEP Graphics. Big thank you to uh, Sim Gear Central. Some amazing uh, button boxes. 
being had uh, for whatever sim experience or looking for it could be farm sim truck sim i racing sim flight sim or even the sim sims be sure to head on over to sim gear central to get yourself a button box here today of course big thank you to track bar media some amazing photo and video edits of real life and sim life racing as well as some customized uh, apparel and uh, all that kind of stuff of some of your favorite drivers here in the NTRL. So be sure to head on over to Track Bar Media to check it all out. And of course, big thank you to Beatles Custom Car Carriers. Some uh, fantastic uh, model truck car carriers. And just to add to your collection of uh, model cars, or maybe you need something to toting them all around with, you know? It's, it's, I don't know what people do with these other than show them off, so... Maybe you just want to show it off. That's fine. Just get yourself a customized car carrier from Beatles Custom Car Carriers. And with that, hold on. Press some buttons. I'm Alan Brown, and I am joined by my partner in crime, the Brew Master in general, Mr. Alan English, logging into the action here tonight. Alan, 70 laps here at Talladega, one of our uh, favorite super speedway tracks. It is wide, it is open, and it is fast, as uh, these drivers are going to uh, get down to business here in a few minutes. So, big track, big speed, big danger. Uh, big risk and reward track, you know, pushing it hard and, and, and trying to make spots and uh, use that draft to your advantage and, and make passes whenever you can. Or you can do kind of like me and like Adam like to do as uh, just kind of try to stay on the lead lap because, you know, uh, cautions are going to happen. Just take care of your equipment, stay out of danger, uh, stay on the lead lap. Try to stay with the lead pack if you can. They only got one fast repair, so... Uh, pushing it hard, being aggressive early, that's not really the you know, the route I would take, but hey, some guys are able to do it and do it well. So uh, little differences in strategy here we're going to see uh, with the trucks here at Dega. So as always, I expect a, a very exciting, uh, fun-filled and uh, maybe accident-filled <laughs> race as well. And it's always fun coming here. And that indeed it is. It's down there on the tumultuous pit road, Mr. Adam Turner here tonight, our anger management specialist, Adam. We're, uh, you know, getting ready for some high speed flying action, which means parts will be flying, wrenches might be headed over your head. Uh, just be careful down there on pit road tonight, there. I ain't afraid of these fools. Look, this is what they do they run these super speedways and they get mad at each other. I mean, like, what do you think is going to happen? Somebody is going to make a mistake in a pack, and we're going to have some issues. That's what we're doing here tonight, and that's what we've been doing. Yeah, and if you want to, you don't like the guy next to you, door him. If you don't like the guy in front of you, turn him. Start the big one. I don't care. Let's just have fun. This is what this is what it's all about. You know, at least try to run some solid laps. And about lap 50, let's start just destroying each other. You know, Take out your enemy. Uh, some of you don't like, let them know, bump them, send them into the wall. I don't care. Let's have some fun. It's Talladega. It's the uh, granddaddy of them all or whatever the hell they call it. But they do have some rules here now. Let me tell you those rules, Brown. You got one fast repair, which I think is nice. 65% fuel. Three total sets of tires. 18 incident points. You get a penalty. Six incident points after that. You'll start accruing more penalties. And look, man, here's the the deal it's hot out there it is going to get a little slick 135 track surface temperature right now good lord or dw got these boys sweating out there here tonight as we take a look at tonight's race information beautiful sun shiny skies here of course another track that uh, we'd love to see some lights installed here but uh not uh, not headed that way just yet but otherwise yeah these drivers really not looking um, looking too bad weather-wise here tonight. No rain in the forecast whatsoever. But like you said there, Mr. Turner, it, uh, it is definitely uh, hot and it's probably going to be it slick. Bringing us down to tonight's key to the race, though. It's going to be super important. you got to find yourself a frenemy. A guy that you might be willing to work with for a majority of the race, but then come lap number 70 or maybe some bonus time coming out of you 
I, then they start to become your enemy a little bit. Yeah. I like enemies. Hey, well, I know what do they, what are they sa say in English? Are you there? I mean, I think you might have left us. No, I'm here. Keep your uh, friends close, but keep your enemies closer. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, hey, let's pretend hey. like I'm friends with Gary Sack all of a sudden and I need him to do something for me on a track, and then I just just smoke him like a pirate right out of the way. Yeah, Because what? I, pre I pretended like I was his friend during the race, and then I used him, and then I pushed him out of the way when I wanted to win. Well, Isn't that what I'm, is that what I'm talking about? Yeah, but drivers have memories, man. They're, Gary's going to remember that next week uh, when yeah. you need at a super speedway because you can't do it by yourself at a super speedway. So no. I just decided to uh, check up and let you... Uh, let you uh, screw yourself out of. Well, he'll he'll end up getting me in the long run. I know. I just mentioned Gary Sapp because I love the guy. He's a fun guy. We've known Gary for a long time, and I know he likes to have fun with us. But that's just an example. I mean, it could go for anybody. It was just a kind of a hyperbole type of thing, you know. Let's just have some fun out here, guys, and maybe sure. hurt hurt your neighbor. I don't care. Anyway. Anyway, indeed, as these drivers start to head on down to the racetrack, which means we can uh, start this show on off and tell everybody where their favorite driver is going to be starting here tonight with the 99 of America's driver, Albert Anderson, starting up there on pole position. Man, Albert really knows his way around these tracks out here. He's got the six of Caleb Sisk to his outside starting in second tonight. 13 of the old man Paul Durkey starting way up in the front there, starting in third with the 78 of Mr. Chris Jordan starting in fourth. You got the 31 Mr. Scott Milner starting here tonight up inside that top five with the 42 Kevin Winker all the way up to the outside there in six. Seventh will go to the one-legged wonder of the one machine, Mr. Derek Welch starting here tonight in seventh with the eight of Dylan Mad Max Bryant starting right where his uh, card or I should say his truck numbers uh, showing him as is starting there in eighth. 51, Mr. Chris Klein getting a great starting spot up there inside that top 10 in ninth with the uh, three, uh, Mr. Uh, Skyler Herod running out your field starting top 10. 15 machine of Vincent Short starting in 11th place. Outside row number six, Brandon Coleman in the 19. The five of Anthony Williams starts in 13th place. 14th will be Nicholas Tucker in the 88. Uh, the 14 of Alan Grote will start in 15th place. 16th, Joe David in the 2. 22 of Chuck Kiger starts inside row uh, number 9 here at uh, 17th place. Uh, outside of him, uh, old Mac, Mark Collins in the 23 truck. Tom Barish in the double nickel starts 19th place. And to his outside, our buddy Gary the Pirate Sack starting there in the 89 truck. All right, after him... In the 72 machine, John Luke Wilkie, the assassin. In the 21st, 22nd, Connor Leach in the 71. 26, Dylan Ritchie, 23rd, 24th, Nick Biddy in the 32. Double O Joe, Joseph Bennett, 25th, 26th, Philip Ellis in the 29th, 63, Dave Holmberg, 27th. Starting 28th, 98, to Tate Cawthorn, uh, 05, AJ Evangelista starts 29th. 30th, Garrett Thompson in that 17, number 7 of Tristan Cotton. Uh, 31st and 69, Ian Davis rounds it out in 32nd. And that is your starting grid and field here for tonight. As always, thank you all for tuning in and watching and having a great time out here with us. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss a single second of any of the action. And of course, if you enjoy uh, some of the racing that you see, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. That way we can continue to grow this fantastic community. The field uh, starts to get going here behind the uh, pace truck. Lights are on, uh, or mm, the lights are not on. They are off as we head on down the backstretch. Get ready to go to that green flag. Thanks, right. everybody, for joining us over there in the YouTube channel. Scoots and Yopa J both pulling for Gary Sack out there. Plus EV Racing out there saying it's smoking hot out there on the track. 
Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to have much traction issues here, Adam. Well, I don't know about that. We'll see. It's, it's going to be interesting. Super duper speedway. I mean, well, it is, but it, I mean, after 30 laps on a set of tires, it does. It can push you up into the to wall, into the wall and stuff because of the heat on those tires. I mean, you just need to change tires once. There's a lot of variables here, and we're looking forward to what they got going on tonight. And that they do as the pace truck comes down and out of the way as the field heads into that uh, trial for the first time here tonight. Into that Geico restart zone goes the 99 and the 78. And here we go. Green flag racing here at Talladega as they put the hammer down and make their way on down into turns one and two. The bottom line looking pretty nice and uh, tight here. A good uh, push from the 13 to the 99 on that bottom row the high side still trying to gather it up its momentum kevin winker doing a great job pushing there here comes the 13 up with the 42 slipping to the middle lane a big shove coming to the back bumper of that 13 oh man one is being left out to dry that's the 78 of chris jordan trying to hug that outside fence making sure he doesn't get run over by anybody out on that racetrack as that middle lane starts to really build up that momentum now Paul Durkee taking control of the front of this race. He is not dropping down just yet. That's going to open the hole for the 42. Kevin Winker to slip his way on down in front of the 99 of America's driver as the eight lanes start to even out here once again, crossing that line for home one first time as we got ourselves some green flag racing here tonight. Christopher Jordan just showed us how do you lose how to lose 20 some on positions in one lap because it can happen to you here just getting squeezed out right there on the start uh and got stuck on the outside that it can happen just that easy uh gary sack let everybody pass him i think he just wanted to get out of the fray you kind of sometimes in a deal like this i want to be kind of in the back of the pack or a secondary pack Ooh. just in case there's a crash. Oh, 42. Kevin Winker, I don't know if he just got a little arrow loose or maybe the track temp's starting to uh, play a little attention to those tires, but he get it. He gets stuck way in the middle here. He's got to be careful as the field continues to bob and weave and try to pick their lanes. Oh, goodness gracious. We're three wide racing here. <laughs> I thought Coleman was going to come down on somebody, and then he stopped at the last second, and it just a back and forth. Oh, man. Had me on the edge of the seat. Got the 88 there in the Cubs machine. 23 of the Mac Daddy up on the high side working some magic here. The 17 getting into the wall a little bit there, causing the checkup. 69's around oh, big wreck. Upside down, we, yeah, folks. Oh, goodness. Ian Davis got right in the middle of that Jurassic Park number 69 machine. Silverado was upside down for a minute. And it looked like Garrett Thompson getting a, a beating out there as well. Let's go ahead and take a quick look back at uh, kind of what happened here. Like you said, their English is, oh, yeah, just some trucks up there in the outside wall. Causing a little bit of a checkup, forcing the 69 to try to uh, tease his way on down. The problem is, while he was doing that, he was also being passed, and it was four wide. And, yeah, I don't care what track you're at, four wide, not... Uh, Usually not an option. Oh, goodness. And Garrett Thompson, I think, was just trying to stay up and stay out of the way because he knew some guys had more momentum than he did. And it just, that, that little checkup caused a, caused a little bit of a chaos out there for a minute. Well, can't go wrong with a little bit of chaos, but it's early. It's predictable. There's always one early one, you know, and then there's one in the middle and then there's, the big one late at uh, Talladega. So I think we're going to get a good green flag run after this. I hope you're right. I hope so too. As I'd like to thank Muehlberger Custom Homes up there in the uh, kind of, what is it, Three Rivers? Like I always ask you this, but I never uh, should actually write it down, but it's... Uh, I think that's what it is. I think the Three Rivers area there in Michigan, building some fantastic custom homes. 
and uh, doing some great work. If you if you don't believe us, just go to the Muleberger Custom Homes website and a look at all the pictures of the houses that they've built and how just amazingly gorgeous that they are. But also look at the testimonials that they put up. They don't they don't parse them out. They'll they'll throw up whatever whatever uh, you know what reviews people say about their jobs and man if the rating system of five stars just just isn't enough so be sure to next time you're looking to uh, build a house up there in michigan reach on out to uh, bruce muehlberger and muehlberger custom homes well here comes some some uh caution pit stops and i got an angry french bulldog yelling at me so yahtzee you gotta give him beer so here's the deal with bruce you know uh when I become rich, which is getting close to do this racing obligations we have, Brown, I'm gonna have him build us a cabin uh, up in uh, Michigan so we can like a hunting cabin, you know. He said uh, that's cool, but I gotta have money, so we're gonna wait a little bit on the money. But I would definitely have him build my cabin next to Ted Nugent or something up there so we can just enjoy the land together. Oh, I know. Well, imagine what he could do if you'd told him, "Hey man, we need to we need to build out one of those uh like ice ice castle things to get you ice fishing there Ooh. with our good buddy Adam Strom who's joining us joining us there in the chat. Uh, by the way, you might need to go beat up a guy there Turner cuz there's a guy named Zuckenberg giving him some problems and Oh, no. I'll take care of that. Don't you uh let me tell you Strom uh, if there's a Zuckenberg, he's not allowed in the race or around us, so I'll come down there and handle him. He, need, he needs to go back with his pale white skin and his little uh, surfboard and, and go back to the beach, you know, and leave us alone over here in America. Yes. Hope that did it for him. Did that work for you? Hey, it worked for I'm me. Just a, I'm not a big fan of the Zuckerberg guy. You know, yeah. I think he's anti America. That's just my thing. Yeah. But, again, maybe, maybe you should reach out to Muehlberger Custom Homes. Maybe, a, like, a full home might not be in the cards for or a cabin, but one of those yeah. one of those ice castle things, man. Well, that'd be fun. I just, uh, I never ice fished I, before. It, oh, Strom does. He, he could teach us, but. He could tell us what uh, kind of things we needed in our ice castle, you know? Right. Well, so it, in my opinion, it's better because you don't have to, you know, spend thousands of dollars on a boat or a yacht or anything like that. It's, you know, and, and then have to yeah. bust out another thousand every single year. Oh, yeah. I don't like that either. Give us some money. That's all they want, you know? The government just wants money. Speaking of... Hey guys, uh, I'm just going to let you know it's a, tomorrow's a wonderful day in America. Hey, your taxes are due. You know, the taxes that they never said we'd have, they're due tomorrow, guys. So, you know, uh, make sure you fill that out or they're going to come after you and take your home or, you know, something worse. Because you owe it to the government to give them your money. You know, so they that's can give what, it to other people. Well, they can give it to the people crossing across the border, you know, that don't have a. Uh, nothing to deal with do with us yeah so go ahead and then be a good citizen and and pay your taxes at that rate that they decide what you're gonna give them i swear we 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 used to rebel in this world where that we threw tea in that harbor over there you heard about that, that. didn't you that was, that was piddly a... stuff compared to what's going on now. exactly <laughs> exactly that was nothing Compared to what we're dealing with now, but all right, guys, make sure you pay your me. taxes. Yeah, pay your taxes. That's the That's your duty. Lights on the pace truck turn on off, and we get ready to rumble here once again. Gonna have the eight and the thirteen starting side by side. Dylan Bryant and Paul Durkee lined on up ninety nine and the nineteen. Brandon Coleman, Brandon Coleman already up eight spots on the day. Goodness gracious. Just absolutely flying up there to get with his teammate as they enter into that uh, tri-oval here once again. Geico restart zone, and here we go. Green flag racing here once again as the 99 and the 8 get 
to work in here early. The 42, Kevin Winker is going to tuck right down into line and join them on that bottom side as the eight machine filters on up. Ooh, this might be a case of Team All-Star trying to control both lanes here. Ooh, the 19 getting a little squeeze, though, with uh, Coleman there right up his back tailpipe as he gets a big, big run to try to leapfrog over the 8. The 42 and the 99 flip on up into that middle lane, trying to help out the 8 just a little bit here. Meanwhile, on that bottom side, the 31 of Scott Milner starting to pick and bob his way on through. We've seen how important it is to get up there and use teamwork to control both lines. It can uh, benefit your team greatly. Uh, we've seen Kevin Winker and a couple of his buddies do it many times. As we got uh, three wide going on up front and three wide going on here in the middle. Seven of Tristan Cotton trying to lead this kind of secondary pack as the action up at the front starts to kick on off here once again. Still three wide racing, three rows deep. I'm nervous when they're getting this aggressive early, but guys like Grant, Brandon Coleman really making it pay off here early. Uh, up a whole bunch of spots, man. Side by side by side, they trundle down into turns three and four. Really, it's just a team of goats sticking together up there, up against that outside fence. Meanwhile, down low, Scott Milner doing a great job being pushed by the 15 of Vince Short on that bottom side, having some good runs. Uh, middle lane just kind of stalled out right now. I think it's because they're feeling a little bit of like a parachute effect there from those uh, couple of trucks on that far outside lane. Now that they're starting to finally break free, you can just see 99 of Anderson getting a mega run. Side draft can pull you back just a little bit. Plus EV Racing out there pulling for the OG Florida man. Home Depot 00 Joe for the win out there. And talk about the, the name The Assassin for John Luke Wilkie. So that's one of the best nicknames in a while. Lori oh, Vault out here pulling for Albert, who started P1 here tonight, saying give him hell. And uh, Tower Operator saying good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here, Bruce. Adam Strom, our buddy up in Minnesota, is here saying howdy, fellas. Hey, Turner, I'm down here at the entrance to Pit Road, and some guy named Zuckenberg didn't let me in. All this yeah. cold beer is getting warm. Somebody we're, send him some ice down there, man. We already talked about that, yeah. So we're, we've oh, covered sorry. him and Zuckenberg. I already handled Zuckerberg. That's a wrap. No, I got ice for uh, Stromer, and we'll be fine. i tell you who needs a little ice to cool him off, that Folgers machine. Albert Anderson, that's a good-looking paint scheme. I do like a nice Folgers in the morning, you know? I'm a community guy, but I'll have drink Folgers. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's yeah, just coffee. I like it. It's go coffee. with the. It's his sponsor tonight. <laughs> just go with it. Yeah, I get it. We continue to run here side by side. 32 and Nick Biddy up into 14th, up 10 spots on the day. Kind of in the middle of all the action there in the 32 machine. And some good driver cam views. All focused on up. It's a little bit of a shakeup there. Uh, I think a checkup kind of rocked both lanes a little bit, and that's going to allow the one of DW to peek his way on out to the outside lane. The problem is, I mean, it really doesn't have too much help out there. Uh, it does look like he's going to have the 78 of Chris Jordan trying to help him out, out as we go three wide here. A little bit more of a snake train going on in the middle. As uh, I thought some more people were going to bump up to that outside lane, but uh, now we're going to remain for the most part two wide. Ah, there we go. 32 jumping up there with the one machine. Oh, it's the one catches the outside wall. And man, that thing is like one of those super strong neodymium magnets. You just cannot get away from it once when it sucks you on in. Yeah, and the 32 is going to suffer because of it because he didn't have that uh, uh, momentum from that pusher behind him there. Here comes the one. Oh, the one's going to move to the outside of Biddy. Thought maybe he's going to come back and help push him again, but not so much. Talk Man T is out here saying happy Sunday. Let's see some good racing out there tonight. Thank you for being here, Talk Man T. Hey, whatever happened to that Valiant guy? I was worried about him. He used to join us every once in a while. And then he, he would delete all his chat messages. Hey, yeah, he's like or a he scientist or something, like in the in the you know some kind of real big deal with America, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then he just deletes everything. 
and ghosts us. I hadn't forgot you, Valiant. Hope you're watching. Yeah, it looked like the one machine was trying to jump up to the outside there again, and uh, just, again, can't quite get the run going again. We are still super early here, lap 13 out of 70, but, you know, if you're going to test the waters, that would be the time just to maybe try to get the feel of things, how things would react. Just the 99 of Anderson continuing to uh, roll things on through here with the 42, giving him a good push. The 8 working well here with the 88 of Mr. Nick Tucker. 31 of Scott Milner up there, too. Keeps sticking his nose down below the yellow. I think he's trying to get a little air on that grill. He might be uh, getting a little hot there. Some of these drivers that are behind the leaders here, uh, you know, they're going to have to duck their nose out here now and then to pick up some fresh air to cool that truck down. As more and more yep. people start to jump up to that far outside lane and start making it three wide, I think they saw the train of the one machine starting to filter his way on up, and here we go. Three wide racing battling for this race lead. Three wide really deep into the field now. This is... All right, here we go. Now we're on wreck watch again. This is, this is more... Uh, this is where the craziness starts. Oh, right there, oh there here is, we go. There it is. Uh, maybe. Uh, but nah, they kept it straight. <laughs> One's blinking out, so. It, that was the number one. Yeah, the one, and you can just see the scattering of uh, the chaos afterwards as everyone continues tr to try to figure out uh, kind of what's going on and get, get back to racing here. But uh, they did a pretty good job. Everybody kept the nose pointed in the right direction and yeah we did see a little bit of a checkup but everyone had their heads on up and uh we remain green flag racing here from talladega you know that's gonna spread the field out just a little bit so at least temporarily quite a bit, quite a bit actually and uh that could be a huge deal uh, you know at the end of this race what just happened the only time will tell i mean we may have a caution where everybody gets stacked back up but I really thought we were going to have a caution right there because they were three wide for, what, about six rows deep? Oh, yeah. That, that's dangerous. Even the Talladega is dangerous. Yeah, that it is here as the Ada Dylan Bryant continuing to work well with the uh, teammates and par dance partners up there. Got the 88 of Nick Tucker trying to get that uh, middle to high lane working here. 55 of Tom Barish. How about Mr. Tom? He's doing a great job making his way up inside of this top five. Tom knows how to work these uh, restricted plate races. We've seen him run up to the front before like this. Hopefully he can get that double nickel up on the podium here tonight. He's sure doing his damnedest uh, pushing that outside line. You can see there the 88 trying to throw just a little bit of some side draft action going on on the bottom lane. Tucking, bobbing, diving, and weaving here as the field continues to try to regather after uh, some of the chaos and shenanigans that uh, went on. It does look like the uh, little bit of a chase pack starting to form on up here with uh, the seven Tristan Cotton. You got Phil Ellis, Dylan Ritchie, and AJ Evangelista all working together here. And then you got Joe David, Chris Jordan, DW, and Dave Holmberg all trying to group on up everybody trying to catch back up to the back bumper of the uh, 71 and the 98 who are kind of in the trail end of the uh, main field here alan you talk about it every now and then but this is one of the only tracks uh where you can go wide enough to use that turbo tunnel effect where you can dr essentially drive up the middle of a two wide formation like this uh, utilizing side draft off of the inside and outside trucks and just drive up through the middle. They, will we see that tonight? I, I think we will, and I'm actually surprised we almost didn't just see it there. It looked like the 42 of Kevin Winker saw an opening and was starting to poke his head out, but uh, elected to tuck back into line on that bottom side. But uh, I do expect we see at least one taker, if not two, to uh, maybe take that trip. The problem is... We also saw the inverse effect of that here uh, earlier on in uh, English, where the uh, 42 kind of got stuck in the middle all by himself, 
and being forced out of line there, that's uh, he ends up losing quite a few spots. So it's a situational kind of thing where you, you, you got to kind of time it with a run, and that'll help propel you forward. But uh, if you try to do it uh, outside of that, eh, you're you're not in for a fun ride. Yeah, I don't want to be in one of those rides where you're just flipping all over the track here. It just takes one mistake by your neighbor and it could ruin your day, so... got to be super careful running around Talladega. And that indeed is here we go. Let's jump inside the race car here with uh, Mr. Vince Short. Driver of the 15 machine in the... Middle of all the action here, currently sitting in right around 15th spot on that bottom row. And you can just see right up until they get into the corner, man. The only thing he can see is that back bumper of the purple truck directly dead in front of him. I believe that's the 22 of Chuck Kiger. And uh, yeah, there's uh, viewing opportunities are uh, not abound for drivers outside of the top few. You get behind the truck in front of you, it, visibility definitely becomes a problem. That's why you have big wrecks here because uh, people can't see the checkups and the the spins and stuff going in, going on in front of them. They just see some tire smoke and well, I don't know where to go. You know, they just try to go where the other trucks aren't. Doesn't always work out that way. And it looks like we're gonna start coming up on some lap traffic here. On top of that, trying their best to keep it up against that outside fence and gonna get a little tight here but uh looks like uh everyone uh kind of getting the message that the 69 machine staying high ian davis but that alone is scary right there english where you're stuck in the pack you can only see the guy in front of you and uh that truck is getting lapped on the high side and if you don't if it's not called out, you could sneak out there and, and hit him. Uh, so there's got to be communication out here on the track. And, Brown, I know you show a lot of different angles. Like the one you're showing, you previously showed with a gyro cam. That's all these guys see. They don't see the pretty stuff that we get to see as we're just watching the race. The lap, think about this. The lap trucks are, what, 20 miles an hour slower? So, I mean... They come up on you in a hurry, and you really have to watch out and, and be able to drive around them. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of scary sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you you are not kidding. I mean, right now, Dave Holmberg out there all by himself is running around right around 166. I think tops out right around 170 miles per hour. Uh, uh, once when he gets uh, up in going. Meanwhile, these guys, their top speed in this draft, 192, 193. I uh, even see a couple 195s. So I mean, <laughs> that's a uh, that that's a Ricky Bobby or Tozy other car moments. <laughs> oh, so a couple of trucks uh, like Milner getting down on that apron and then getting a little bit squirrely. Uh, oh, here comes Takers to Pit Road. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Winker's oh. coming in hot. Oh, and we got one coming in way too hot. Oh, oh no. Caleb Sisk. Whole front clip is gone. What Nick Tucker, is sneaking Nick there? Nick Tucker, black flag on entering. Caleb Sisk, meatball flag. He's got to come around and pit get that fixed. Yeah, I, man, I don't know. What happened with the uh, six machine? Oh, was he trying to come on down? Oh, the miscommunication there. I don't know what happened with the 89, but the six machine was trying to uh, work his way around the outside and gets caught up there. Oh, goodness. I don't think the six wanted to pit. I think he was just trying to get to that, that low line to minimize his loss of the draft and Man, he went for a wild ride. I was distracted originally by the 42 of Kevin Winker, who, man, he was on a B-52 bomb and run through uh, some of those guys coming on onto the pits. Yeah, he was hauling ass. I didn't know if he was going to be able to back it down in time, but he did. Passed a couple of trucks in the process. 
and was able to back it down to pit road speed, which is 55 miles an hour. That was a wild little exchange right there. That it was. Didn't have a caution, so that was nice. Man, not, not for the uh, six machine. He's hoping for a caution to come out here uh, sooner rather than later as the uh, double O of Joe Bennett's going to lead a uh, few laps here. He's got the double nickel of Tom Barish on his back bumper. You can see the team of goats rejoining the track, trying to join up with each other here. They're going to be pitting this next next lap, I think, the double O and the 55. Okay, coming so up. Lot for more pit stops to happen. Coming up on lap here, we're on lap 25, and I think maybe if you are one of the uh, drivers that was able to save a save some fuel here on this run, uh, well, these, these guys also uh, re-topped up uh, English back on... Uh, laps uh like four or five that uh that caution that we had so i think these guys can make it all uh, pretty much to 30 i think yeah it sounds like pretty much three quarters of the field is about to come in on this next uh pass by the uh by out of turn four. yeah Here and, and you're splitting into thirds brown looks like too we're at about lap 25 oh Ooh. the 55 no tom bearish Oh, getting a little squeezy flag. on those tires. Black flag 55, black flag 63 of Holmberg as well. Little hot. Wow. And my, that, you could say that for the speed, and you can say that for the track temp out there. Turner, you, you got your uh, radar thermometer on out there to uh, see how well your steak is being cooked? Well, yeah, I like to do uh, eggs at 136. It's a good temperature. You run them about 10 minutes on the concrete and have a nice uh, over easy. It is hot out here and we've got some more. Look at Groot. Goodness, no! Tiger. 22 getting bumped in the back end going for a slip and slide. 89 and Gary Sack going for a slip and slide there as well as, man, oh man. I, w I think it was the 14 that was kind of almost did the exact same thing as we saw the 42 do is just able to kind of shoot the gap right up the middle as these guys were coming on in and picked up a few extra positions there. He definitely did. Chuck Kiger, I think, missed the commitment come. No black flag yet for the 22. He, he shouldn't have got one either because he got bumped out of the way. He He's lucky. He's lucky to get on the pit road from what happened to him. So, hopefully the admins yeah. catch that if he does get a black there at him. Yeah, I think that's arguable at minimum. Man, Mark Collins is just getting ridden on the backside here of uh, in thirteenth position. He's got a good pusher behind him. Yeah, he's got the yeah. ninety-eight oh. of Cawthorn. It's oh no. John Luke Wilkie taking a wild trip through the infield grass there. I think he got a little loose trying to get back up to speed down there on the apron and uh, ends up taking uh, taking the iRacing sim to lawn mowing sim for a second. Yeah, and he caught a piece of that inside wall as well. Oh, and got fast traffic coming on up. Oh, goodness. John Luke Wilkie having some uh, rough goes of it out there. It's the 42 of Kevin Winker once when all these pit cycles uh, have been completed up at the very front. He's got the 99 of America's Driver to his backside here. Same thing with Double O Joe Bennett, 15 of Vince Short, and the 51 of Chris Klein. Uh, Anthony Williams, Connor Leach are trying to close up on that gap. Plus, he'd be racing out there on the YouTube saying, it doesn't look like everybody uh, uh, practiced pitting under green. I know that's one of those secondary things you don't really think about that you probably should, especially at a track like this when pitting under green matters so much. There's so much track position to be gained or lost when you're coming in prepping for your pits and on your exit as well. 
take a look here out the back bumper view of uh, our current race leader, Mr. Kevin Winker with Albert Anderson right there, right tucked in behind him. You can actually see Albert starting to really close in that gap and fine tune it. He doesn't want to bump the 42 too hard here and get them all squarely there. There's that tiny little bump now trying to stay locked in. I almost got it. As some traffic's coming up on the outside lane and get a different view from uh, Winker's uh, little man cave that he's got going on there this time. He's got it kind oh. of up in the uh, corner of his room there. He's always it's doing, like, updates. Yeah, keeping it fresh. Check out Sisk and Connor Leach in that uh, awesome Canada machine. They've got a bunch of people that just got in behind them. The outside line is where the, all the momentum is right here. Look for the 6, the 71, the 14, and the 3 to make something happen here if they can keep that up and stay tight. And this, I mean, th this is very important for the 6 machine because this is going to help him try to get a lap back the hard way. He's two laps wow. down at the moment. So uh, he's definitely tag teaming with the right people right now as the 71's getting basically a freebie pull. Yeah, the, the six saw the 71 coming up on the outside by himself, jumped out in front, and then all these folks jumped in behind them. So, yeah, man, the teams can form uh, just uh, out of uh, out of thin air. <laughs> That's what we saw here a couple laps ago. Well, I mean, you think it might be the Canadian thing going on? I mean, the well, Sisk is from Carolinas, so. Oh. I thought he was Canadian, eh? Oh, no, no. Okay, I get confused on some of this stuff. Hey, you, you team up with who's around you, right? That's, That's true. Never mind. These pack well, racing tracks. So only Dylan Ritchie and Connor Leach are the Canadians at hand right now. I believe so. Yeah, Connor Leach and... Uh, like, they Dylan probably have a pack to, like, take out America, you know? But yeah, <laughs> it's two versus many. But there are friends and uh, neighbors to the north, and they make a great Elsinore beer up there, eh? So that's true. Yeah, I do like the Canadian friends, even though they use the metric system. Brown, there are three cars that are about to get lapped. This should be interesting here with uh, the front uh, part of this field, and that indeed it should be, but. Uh, you also got to remember that uh, the 6 machine and the 71, I believe, are teammates along with the 14. So uh, I, I think there's probably some radio chatter inside of that group uh, kind of trying to help each other on along here tonight. Our operator, uh, Bruce, Bruce Muehlberger, saying, Ah, 42's got him a new house, hence a new gaming room. What? Custom home, yeah. A Winker custom home, that seems. Sure. Is that a thing? I'm there sure we go. Bruce had something to do with it. Uh, oh, nasty. one high, one low. Oh, no. Oh, oh three needle. wide, oh, four oh, wide God. here. Oh, goodness. That is not the spot that you want to be seeing some uh, <laughs> snake train and loosey goosey stuff going on. But uh, they. Ooh, I don't know if they made it work, but they got through it. How do they get through that? I don't know, but the guys that were getting lapped, even though they changed, you know, some went low and some went high, they held their line. They did a great job uh, staying kind of out of the way. But it'd be nice if they went the same direction. No, know, it's so racing. They can do whatever they want. It's their that's line. That's true. They can. They can do whatever they, they want. Doesn't matter. They can. And nothing happened. I think it was a lot of good racing right there, actually. Oh. It scared me a little bit. I'm scared all the time. <laughs> the action is still going on up here. As we got one against oh, the outside no. fence. Oh, it was four wide again. Oh, my goodness. That's the 88 of Nick Tucker getting past there. And he stayed right up against the wall where he should be. You, you know what's good right now? I t I've got a new blood pressure medicine. The doctor's like, hey, this isn't working for you because you're stressed, bro. So I got this yeah. new stuff, and this is not, I don't even care. This is smooth. Don't even bother me. Feeling real nice here. Quiet. 
might be the cold ones helping too, but still. Sure. Doc knows best. <laughs> That's right. Well, I mean, I think the true test here, Adam, is to throw you into one of these trucks and no, have, no, have, no, you, no, no. have you dealing with all this. No, 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 Brown. Now you're going to push the envelope. No, I like it here with y'all just kind of hanging out and watching. Because it is stressful. When you're holding that wheel, your hands get tired, the knuckles get white. It, it really is a thing. And we, we're just talking about it here and having a lot of fun, but... It's stressful oh. inside the cockpit here. Oh, man, 99 of Albert Anderson slamming the door shut there on the six machine on the uh, on the bottom row. That's leaving kind of double O Joe out to dry as the 71 jumps up to the outside with the six here. We got that lazy Susan in full effect as we're going to see some ebbing and flowing of some of these lines here. Looks like the 89 doing his best to stick up to that outside wall and just let all the chaos unfold underneath him here. So as soon as that hole developed behind Anderson and he had nobody pushing, he lost three positions right away. Oh, as the six yep. goes up, oh, gets in the oh. way of the double O. We're going three wide, four wide down the back stretch. Goodness. 99 of oh, Anderson. Yeah, he, he's getting squeezed. He's hoping for someone to let him back up onto the racetrack. Oh, the 14. Oh. <laughs> he goes for a ride, gets back up on the track. There oh, and there we go. Five of Anthony Williams back up into the outside wall pretty hard. And now the inside wall. Goodness. Well, I don't I don't really know if we can put blame on that one. Albert was just trying to meld back into the track and the guys that hosed him wouldn't let him back in. Uh, somebody so. called to him and said, Hey, Come on in. I, th I think somebody said, Hey, I got a gap for your son. I think it was a fifteen. I d I'm not sure what he said on the radio. I couldn't quite make it out, but it was directed to Anderson. I, I thought he was trying to help him. I think a a he might have nicked the front end of somebody. Goat or Groat, I'm sorry. Four 14 of Alan Groat, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, there's... Yeah, Brown, let that play out. I don't, I, I don't know. What did you see? All right, so Albert stuck down on that bottom side. He recognizes that the 14 is still there. And uh, he doesn't have the room, so he gets back down to the apron. I think what he sees right now, and again, he doesn't have a live spotter in his ear telling him, hey, there's a run coming, hey, there's a hole here, hey, there's not a hole there. Uh, so I got a feeling Albert thinks that there might be a little bit of a hole behind the 14 and in front of the 22, goes to move on up. Unfortunately, just a smidge too early, but the corner was coming on up hooks the 14 just or gets into his quarter panel at least the 14 does a great job here keeping it pointed in the right direction i thought the 14 was going to go for a ride either yeah. way far into the outside wall or all the way down into the inside wall but the 14 saves it comes back on up the track unfortunately it's in the middle of the corner the second he hits that transition it jumps him up an extra half lane or so into the 22 which gets him on up into that five now there was some net code involved there with the 22 and the five but i got a feeling they were going to make contact anyway yeah chuck kyer kind of closed that hole uh after the 14 went by and anderson could not get back up and uh yeah vince short was telling him on the radio hey albert i won't leave the gap here for you but it was too late they were already to the turn and he was committed and there you go, yeah. the wreck, wreck happened, and then uh, looks like Tom Barish and Double O Joe Bennett both with black flags. Ooh, that kind of hurts, but I'll tell you what, that's just racing, really. Uh, Albert tr was trying to get back where he needed to be, and, you know, these trucks are moving at a high rate of speed, and there's all kinds of a little miscommunication between some of them sometimes, so that's all right. We'll get racked up and ready to go again. Yahtzee like getting on the interstate too nobody's got to move over or nope. open a gap for you you've got to you've got to figure out your own way to get back up on that up on that big road so yeah i, I you know albert anderson just kind of stuck it in there when he where he thought it would fit and just didn't quite fit yet now and you know uh alan you as i was saying kind of during that uh breakdown there you know, these guys don't have those live spotters. I know both of us have done sure. some stints, 
you know, helping out buddies in, in league races and whatnot. And I mean, it is a massive, massive difference between having just the AI spotter saying, hey, clear inside, clear outside, uh, all this and that versus, hey, not clear yet. There's two cars yet to come before you have, you know, there's you get a whole m bunch more uh, communication and uh, information coming your way with a live spotter. And the, the AI spotter is better than nothing. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, like you said, it, it says nothing about, hey, the 15's checking up to let you in. You know, that, he would never hear that. Or, you know, hey, the, the 22's moving down. Even though the 22 was still above the 99, you know, he, he didn't know that the 22 moved down, I don't think. You know, it's just mm. one of those things you, you know, He's in lane two instead of lane three, you know, and, and you're in one. So, I mean, there's a lot of specific things that are lost uh, when you're just running just that AI spot, AI spotter. Uh, one of my favorite things to do when I was spotting for Crash when he was doing the road to road to pro stuff was, yeah, es yeah, yeah. especially at tracks like this, was uh, <laughs> I'd... I wouldn't count down for his pit box, but I would count down if, uh, you know, there was a hole coming up or something. I'd be like, all right, hole in three, two, one, go. And he would, you know, move up then. And That's it. It's an invaluable mm -hmm. thing to have, man. It's 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 great to have a real person there, but uh, can't really do it in this league. Uh, not at all as here we go lights on the pace car back to the off position as we get ready to go back to green flag racing 51 of chris klein and the 42 of kevin wink are gonna start this one on off no, excuse me side by side 71 of connor leach 99 of albert anderson uh got the uh 15 vince short three skylar Herod, nick pity mr mark collins joe david and anthony williams making up your Top 10 to get this party restarted as we're just a few laps past the halfway point. Only one driver so far disconnected here tonight. Garrett Thompson, driver of the 17, is uh, done for the night. Everybody else is still uh, connected here, whether they're in the pit road or out on the track. And how about that? The uh, six of Caleb Sisk was able to get a lap back that... Uh, last caution so he is now your lucky dog driver uh racing against scott milner nick tucker and uh, uh chuck kiger here so he's hoping to get back onto a lead lap as the green flag flies in here we go once again green flag racing and goodness we got ourselves a little bit of a spread out start i don't know if people were not quite ready for the green flag or what but 51 to Chris Klein out to a quick and early lead, but that left some big, big holes. The 71 is going to come on through on the bottom side as the 42 connects with the 51's back bumper there to try to help aid him in getting back up to speed. 71's run kind of fizzled on out there for a split second. Now the 15 of Vince Short is right there with the, some help with the 32 of Nick Biddy on that bottom side to try to get them back on up to speed as the shuffle and bustle ramps back on up here from Talladega. Yeah, the last thing you want to do on a restart at Talladega is get too far ahead, and Chris Klein was pretty close to doing that. I think you recognized uh, he was too far out in front there and then started to move around and adjust. But... Ooh, man, I'm... I'm getting a little worried here. Those bumpers of the 42 and the 51 aren't 100% lined up all the time here, and it is starting to starting to worry me a little bit. As compared on that bottom side, you can see the 15 and the 71. Man, they almost look like one giant long truck. They they they're really not getting out of line too much. These trucks are pretty forgiving. Uh, in, in, in most of the the pushing aspect of it, but yeah, you, you still got to be careful. Hey, for the most part, for me here is is the is the net code in these trucks, which is uh, uh, yeah. a, a roulette wheel at best. S something yeah, that can't wait code. for them. Yeah. 
can't wait for them to finally figure out what's going on with it. I mean, it's it's a brick. How how hard is it to you know to uh, <laughs> simulate a brick traveling at 200 miles an hour? Here we go. Good good green flag run here. Guys are getting get some laps clicked off here. As uh, they're fixing to start lap 43 when they come back around. Yeah, they're uh, they're definitely getting right back into the action here. As uh, we got a little little action going on. We got the 88 and Nick Tucker trying to work some other drivers here in the back of the field and catch back on up. You got the 7 of Tristan Cotton, the Trister, uh, back towards the uh, tail end of this main lead car pack here in that 7 machine. Back here in 19th, having... An okay run thus far. A shake up here. 22 of Kiger trying to put a little side draft down on the 63. Dave Holmberg. They are racing for position two laps down. And Chuck joining us here with his driver cam tonight. see him working that uh, racing wheel good to see that he's got some gloves on so that way the, uh, the sweat in his palms don't uh, make that steering wheel a little slick I, mean, oh, I love gloves if, if you're running good force feedback and stuff too you can get some blisters driving I, I've heard it happening to people so having some uh, gloves to give a little bit of give a little bit of slip in there I can dig the hat. I don't. I like the hat. Looking sharp out Ooh. there on the race, race we'll track. Right up into the back bumper there, the '63. One of them nice direct drive wheels. It looked like. Hey, did I miss? Did you talk about these guys were talking about my medication? I'm gonna have to retort. Plus CV racing. But the. Uh, Cialis? Cialis? Yeah, he said it's not a blood pressure medication. That's true. That's a heart medication. It's very good for your heart. You know, I don't know if he knows that, but you might want to have your doctor, you know, help you out there with some of that. Five of Anthony Williams stuck to the outside lane here, trying to, uh, hey, well, trying to keep things, uh, Keep things rolling and... Ooh, big move up there at the front. Saw a couple trucks move from the middle lane down to the bottom there with Chris Klein and Connor Leach. Some uh, some good runs to be had there. Looks like uh, Nick Tucker is coming back out onto the racetrack. Gary Sack also with a extended pit stop coming back out to uh, enjoy some more racing fun with... 26 laps left to go. We're going to take a quick step aside here and take a pause for the cause and um, say a huge thank you to all of our sponsors. But when we come back, we'll have the last remaining few laps here from uh, Talladega in this Num Thumbs Racing League Super Speedway Series event.
as we return back to the action, yellow flag is out. Goodness, I don't know what happened here. I missed it on my screen. It looks like the 22 of Kyger going for a little bit of a ride, though. I didn't catch it on mine either. Oh, 2263, oh, 26 sideways across the uh, racetrack there. Dylan Ritchie. Well, we were just enjoying the commercial. <laughs> just, oh, man. That's what we were doing. Ooh, great job there from Ritchie. Doesn't make an ounce of contact there with the outside wall, man. That was very impressive. And, uh, yeah. Wow. Able to... They can drive now. Yeah, steer that, uh, steer that boat, uh, back in the right direction. And, uh, originally I was gonna say, uh, we're gonna have to start looking at, uh, strategy for some pit stops here, because I don't think any anybody was gonna make it, but, uh, well, this is gonna throw a, throw a wrench in that, and I got a feeling we're gonna see everybody come on down. And this is the perfect time. We're at lap 50. We cut it into thirds. This is 70, you know, uh, not really thirds, but close to thirds. We're right here where we need to be. I think, English, do you think if we fill up right now, are we good for the rest of the race? If we don't have any green, white checkers, no, we've true. got three opportunities here yeah. with this league for a green, white checker. So if they get a caution in between now and when green white checkers start uh maybe they might be good but i don't know time will tell dude this is uh that's cutting it really close so we go ahead and watch this race as they come on in and down onto a pit road looks like winker anderson and bryant all electing to uh stay on out here Interesting, uh, bold strategy call there, Cotton. Bold strategy. Well, just have to wait to see if it works out for him. Big Disc Breaks joining us out there in the YouTube chat. Thank you for being here. Brett Winker out there pulling for, uh, hashtag Winker Nation as, uh, he cheers on the 42 of Kevin. Well, dang, boys, that was a pretty perfectly timed caution, I guess you could say. Yeah. That needed I gas. So. I think it worked out all right for everybody. I was just trying to take a nap during that break, and then all of a sudden there was a crash. I've been, uh, yeah, it's been a beautiful day here on the hill. So I, yeah. I've been drinking drinking cold beer and uh, same. I've been doing some gardening. You know, have you ever heard of this thing? Yeah, gardening. Yeah, so I got uh, like a white trash ghetto garden I put up in the back of my truck that doesn't run, and then uh, some wait, containers wait. I found on the side of the road. That's where I'm putting all my stuff. You planted I, a bunch of. What vegetables or something in your old truck? Not in the well, in containers that I found off the side of the road, but it I set it up in the back of the truck so it's easy for me to get to. Well, you it's understand? on the hill and there's plenty of sun right there where it's Oh, at. it's a perfect spot. I mean I'm getting the truck the truck can run, I gotta put a battery in it, you know. What Everybody you has one of those. You go to town, you know, are you gonna take the plants out or you just No, I take my uh my newer vehicle, my other okay. truck. I'm rich with trucks, you know. I got one that's sure. old and runs with a new battery, and I got one that's almost paid off, you know. Sure. I mean, does that make sense to you? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, just a a a gazillionaire here. Uh, yeah, I just have to be brag a little bit. Yes, I do have two trucks. One is an O five, and one's a seventeen. Big okay, deal. Of, I mean, one's full of plants. <laughs> and truck bed and beer cans. <laughs> but still, that's where I'm doing my little garden this year, guys. And I, nice. I'll send pictures if everybody wants to see my uh, kind of progression through this the season. You know, just cilantro and tomatoes and onions and turnips. I got some turnips. Ooh, nice. does that interest you at all? 
turnip grass. Watermelon? Yeah. We're we're riding the heart of watermelon growing where I'm at. Got watermelons. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna give it a run this year. See, I, here I am only thinking you would the only green thumb you would ever have is if you got an infection in your thumb and it turned gangrenous, you know. Well, and I might have had that a time or two, but I'm changing uh, the way I do things, you know. I'm going to try to grow life instead of just sucking the life out of people with my negativity. You know, I'm trying to be positive this year, Brown. Turn Please in, just stay with me. Turn in a new leaf? I think so. I'm going to try. It's beautiful right now. The spring is... The birds are chirping. The spring is uh, here. And I'm just trying to be positive. I'm with you on the vegetables, man. I love growing veggies, and yeah, I'm gonna can a bunch of tomatoes and uh, green beans this year. They're already starting to come in, so they're not uh, ripe yet, but they're starting to come in. That's perfect. Here we go, Brown. Let's get some more racing in. Yeah, speaking of uh, starting to come in, the pit, uh, the pace truck, not the pit truck, but the pace truck makes his way on down into a pit road as we get ready with the 42 and the 99 starting things on off side by side here once again green flag racing oh and that's a teammate start if i've ever seen one the eight laying just a little en enough back there to allow the 99 to tuck right into line there on that bottom side 51 of chris klein trying his best to build up that momentum problem is he it's only him and one other driver that's the 23 of the mac daddy mark collins until here comes the one of DW flying up with a whole army of help. 15 of Vince Short also fills in some uh, gaps and holes there and is able to tighten everybody back on up. 71 of Connor Leach kind of stuck down there on the bottom side, nowhere to go with the three machine of Skylar Herod trying to uh, figure out a way to get his way on up here to the front. You got a clump of blue ovals here all kind of helping each other the 32 the 2 the 3 the uh, 5 and the 14 all similar manufacturers that doesn't mean they're exactly work together whoa look turbo tunnel taker of the night i think oh the 88's around after he goes up the middle oh he is man oh my goodness took several trucks with him there Tried to run up the middle, it didn't quite happen. My goodness. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look back here at, uh, at what happened. Actually, let me make sure I'm on the right caution, first of all. Oh, yeah, there's that 88 trying to sneak his way up through that turbo tunnel. There, The hole was there. Oh, man. Problem is, it then got extremely squeezed and tightened. Oh, yeah. So besides Nick Tucker, the driver of the 88, you also had Tom Barish, Scott Milner, and Dylan Ritchie all with meatball flags. They've got to Ouch. come down and get that oh, damage yeah. fixed before they can be scored again. Oh, that well, that's, that, that 31 is uh, pff, missing three quarters of his truck there. Goodness. Yeah, he smoked the... He smoked the wall there. Well, one fast repair can maybe help you through this thing. I kind of like at a super speedway having one fast repair. I don't think it's... Sure, yeah. In iRacing, let's say, I don't think it's fair to not have one. But that's just my personal opinion. Some people like no fast repairs or two. I think one is perfect in this situation. Took a quick ride there with the... Uh, yeah, we took a ride there with somebody and got to see all the action. It was the uh, 98 to take Cawthorn, excuse me. Had a brain fart there. But uh, you're starting to see some of that desperation start to settle on in as here comes Winker Anderson and I got, yeah, there comes Bryant all together now the they got a tough task here it's gonna be you know about 14 laps left to go and they're gonna make their way up through this field it's definitely a possibility uh have seen it before and i got a wow. feeling we'll see it here again but 
black fat black flag Albert Anderson driver to the ninety nine. Well, you almost, a, uh, you almost were her. talking about like a, a cigarette in Europe there. I, I know you missed. Yeah, almost, 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 almost got you. But that's <laughs> the beauty of uh, talking. We can't always talk yeah. precisely. Some of the the English language is hard. It doesn't always come out the way we want it to. But well, I understood a, what you said. Yeah, he got a black flag for passing under yellow. I guess. So we'll see if the admins clear that. They yeah, usually clear those. Cleared. Yeah, it'll be cleared off of that. Uh, because of the chaos of the yellows. Brown, have you ever said anything on the air that you wish you were like, oh, dang it, I shouldn't have said that? All the time. <laughs> it happens, right? We, we, we're we on the fly. We say we're just talking and running our oh, mouths. Sometimes how we say stuff that you're like, damn it, why did I say that? Yeah, how many made up like that? How many made up words have I said? Well, you yes. tonight or <laughs> uh, I don't not think... tonight. Tonight <laughs> you haven't tonight. had any. I think you've been good tonight. But hey, but you're doing stuff on the fly, like even worse than me in English. You're touching buttons and you know you operating the whole thing. So it's it's very difficult. People don't realize sometimes you got to give us a little grace here. He's touching lives too with this. Uh... Amazing broadcast that he helps put. I on think he life. touches lives. You both, you two, yeah. have touched my life, and I appreciate both of you. I'm going to be nice tonight. Oh, what? You both have oh. very. You, you're don't very. Get all, uh, don't get all. No, I don't want to get you're emotional or nothing. But no, you both have are very. You mean <laughs> a lot to me and my family. So thank you. Well, it, oh. here we'll 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 keep the sentiment going here, Turner, as I lower my voice and talk. <laughs> nice master's talk and sultry. As we're live <laughs> from the Masters. <laughs> nice. Mr. Scotty Scheffler walking away with a, another green jacket. I'm Jim I Nance. Love that. And I only speak three words every two minutes. <laughs> that's, the, that's the rate at which uh, golf announcers function. That's a fun, that was a fun Masters, though. I it drank a, an Azalea. Brown, I made an Azalea for me and my neighbor. The drink of the Masters. Did you get a, a pimento cheese sandwich? No, I didn't have those over here, but oh, we didn't make the drinks. Cheese. I love pimento and cheese. I, I, I've, I'm, I'm saving it for the time that I actually go to to have my first official... You've never had one? No, no. And it's, I'm not, oh, I grew I'm, up eating those. I'm not gonna oh, until I find myself on those beautiful, lush green lawns of Augusta National. My grandma used to always uh, make us pimento cheese sandwiches when we'd visit. Yeah, we. my mom made them. It was like a, a regular thing. I guess it was cheap, you know. Mm. Here, eat this, kids. Now it's a fancy thing at the Master's. <laughs> it kind of changed to uh, yeah. Hey, we're not having beans and ground beef tonight, you know, and we're not having Saturday night special. We're gonna have some pimento cheese sandwiches. Okay, whatever. But yeah, no, they're not. I love a nice pimento cheese, and the Costco has a good brand of pimento cheese, by the way. If you H E B, H E B has the best. They got homemade. Yeah. If you go to the right part, you got to get it. But anyway, here we go, Brown. As so we uh, take it from uh, golf all the way back to the racetrack here at Talladega. Pace car coming on down and in. Got the 51 and the 23 starting side by side as they come on in and enter that Geico restart zone. Just a reminder to folks, that start finish line is that extra 250, 300 yards from the center of the trival something to keep a look out for oh it's a 15 i don't know what happened there if he spun some tires or what but gets way back behind that 51 machine that's allowing that outside lane get a huge run up on that line i believe he missed a shift here comes the eight down the middle splitting the 72 and the seven he's looking to the outside of caleb sisk right now 
Trying to catch up to Nick Biddy, which he can do because these trucks draft like crazy. And that they do. Oh, oh and no, one up can... into the wall. Oh, able to save it, but a cluster happening. Oh, goodness. Still green flag once racing. Again, 19 once again using that turbo tunnel to fly up the middle. Yeah, they started run out of room a little bit there. Yeah, some great avoidance maneuvers there from the field as we continue to race. Green flag racing here with the 23 and the 71 locked into some side-by-side -side battles. The three trying to help out his teammate there in the 71, continuing to push and shove their way on up here up at the front. Good runs here from the two of Joe David as well, trying to take that ride of momentum up to uh, the front of this field you also got that six oh. of caleb sisk so you gotta watch out we just saw the 71 the three and the five all together on the outside there we almost had a push the pusher situation there the three was locked into the 71's bumper and the the five came up and looks like he tapped just after separation right in front of him we saw that happen during practice we saw a couple of uh incidents where it was a push the pusher situation two together is great when you add that third truck in there that transfer of that uh that bump energy going through that middle truck uh here we go again it Ooh. almost happened again it's a it, it's that newton's cradle effect i think what you're trying to get at is yeah 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 you you just watch that momentum shuffle through multiple vehicles and you can see it's actually costing that outside lane a little bit of some of that momentum because they're not quite able to stay kind of locked in together oh it's a big curve shuffle oh, happening oh man alan grote trying to go up the middle and then trying to rejoin the outside line here goes the five to the outside let's see if anybody goes with them the eight's way back there but He's going to duck down and take the second lane. Oh, the five's out of luck. Yeah, he's going to have Anthony to wait Williams a second. Is going to the back. Yeah, yeah, oh, man. And there were some holes, but they are being quickly filled. But, oh, now people are starting to jump up to that outside lane, making it three wide up here up at the front. Oh, no, we got some more contact. Oh, Coleman. and this one. Oh, Coleman going for a bumpy and wild ride. Still green flag, even though we got bumpers flying. 71 going for a wild ride. What happened up at the front? There was two accidents there. Yeah, something I happened didn't see the front. In the back, then something happened in the front. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that one was kind of wacky, really. That involved the 1 and the 71... The 51? Yeah, let's go ahead and jump up to our chopper camera and kind of see what happened here. Oh, the... Okay. The 51. Uh, let's slow this one down. Oh, the net code got the 51. Oh, getting kind of magnetized to the three, and the, he gets up into the 71, and it was all chaos from there. 15 getting imagine. sucked in. and How frustrated the drivers in all of these leagues are with the netcode thing just... Now, that may have been contact anyway, but it didn't even... Give him a chance to... I racing didn't even give him a chance, yeah. And I think the six of Caleb Sisk, he was able to just bomb right through all of that. Let's go ahead and take a ride here with the uh, six machine as it happened in front of him. Yeah, well, that's a... <laughs> Paul Durkee was uh, having a quite, quite a show out there. Let's try this once... Once again, here from the six machine, sees it all happen, goes way down. Good night. <laughs> oh, what a great view. <laughs> that was awesome. Having a tire smoke and cars or trucks in this case flying everywhere. And oh man, it's uh, 
You got a, another yellow flag here. Going to be going back to the green flag with about six laps left to go with Mark Collins and Albert Anderson up at the front with that six machine in the 13-5. 29, 78, 42, double O, and the 14. Let's see, is this Philip Ellis, the driver of the 29, up 20 spots, currently sitting uh, in six. He'll start. He'll start outside row number three. Man, what a run for him out here tonight! We'll have Kevin Winker starting right behind him. And Chris Jordan in the 78 machine is outside. Well, no, he'll be Chris Jordan will be caddy corner behind him there. Anthony Williams will be beside him on the restart. Plus, EV Racing says that uh, the Turbo Tunnel Pass was a move like no other. And also, uh, on the Masters talk, uh, he said, I painted a Master Next Gen car and ran it this week. Also pointing out that uh, Double O Joe made it back on the lead lap uh, that, last, uh, that last caution, so... Double Joe currently being scored in the top 10 in ninth position. Mm. Coming down to it, boys. Uh, no, we're getting there. Adam, Adam uh, got Mark Collins up here leading this thing. Is he going to be leading this thing when they go into turns one and two? Or I don't think so. I mean, no, I no mean, offense, but. You know how it gets kind of crazy here at Dega. Oh my goodness. So much freaking happens. And Mark Collins, one of those guys, he, he did pit on lap 50. Should be good on fuel. And of course, you know, of course either 50 or 55. Go ahead there. The, the almighty question is, in fact, <laughs> for uh, for how long will they be good? These cautions are helping with the fuel mileage. Hopefully, uh, they've got their uh, ignition switch mapped. I know that can really help you out. Well, not everybody does that, where you could just turn it off and turn it on. It helps a ton. I never got into that. I wasn't. I was too busy trying to keep it in between the lines. You know, I was too dumb to figure out another button to touch. Yeah. So under That's caution, that the easiest way to do it under caution is, you know, you you clutch in, kill the ignition. Then when the motor dies, turn the ignition back on, hold the clutch, and then when you get ready to refire the engine, just let the clutch out and it'll refire, and then just repeat, keep doing the same thing, ignition off, ignition on, dump the clutch. You can wow. save a ton of gas. Real pro tip here. It sounds like you know what you're talking about for once. I've That's done crazy it a bunch. Just, I've done it a bunch. Uh, at tracks like this and, and, and road courses as well. Yeah. You have been a champion of uh, these big uh, tracks. So, Brown, here we go. We got that extra three or 400 uh, yards right here. As the pace truck peels on off, down and out of the way, side by side, they all line on up. And all at the same time, the hammer hits the floor as we go green flag racing here once again with six laps left to go. Side by side goes the 23 and the 99 down through turns one and two. The six machine trying to push that 23 all the way up here up at the front and doing a great job of doing it. You got that 29 of Phil Ellis having a great job pushing there as well. But the 99 getting some big time help from the 13 and the 40. 
42 making some runs, making that middle lane count here once again as the 42 peaks to the outside lane, not quite able to get the run. Backs on out of it as a caution. Yellow's out. Caution comes on out. 51 to Chris Klein. Something yeah. happened with him. He got spun yeah. down to the inside, hit the inside wall. Go ahead there, Adam. But, you no, say? I don't think that's what, because he was clear. I don't think that's what oh. only caused the caution. Then he got hit again. <laughs> what? It was 22 and the 51. Oh, the 22 got sandwiched between the 19, and I think that's the 63, and he goes spinning up the track up into the 51. And, yeah, the 51 just goes for a wicked tumble ride. He, I think he was sideways enough with enough traffic behind him that I think that's what uh, what caused the uh, flag to come on out. So Klein's minding his own business, cruising up top, and then just he gets smoked. out of nowhere. That's how, that's how it works here at Talladega, though. You know? And that, uh, that indeed it. it is as... We uh we get ready and we're we're gonna whether it's a official or unofficial we're gonna have ourselves a green white checker finish here tonight. It's gonna be gonna be close. I think we will see yeah. a green white a unofficial green white checker before going into bonus time though. You might be right. Mm. It'll be a lap a lap difference maybe. Difference maker here. We'll see. Hey, we will definitely have to see. Just like our great fans are gonna have to uh, have to see. And let's hold on a second. Let me type this. You are typing. Can't do you two things typing. at once. Prove you are not a robot. I understand. I can't click either. All the, click all the pictures uh, of that contain a bicycle. <laughs> Click buttons. <laughs> oh, I hate those. And it says, like, uh, click the ones with the stairs. Well, I can't even see the damn screen on my phone. I'm like, I can't even see what's happening here. How am I going to click the ones with the stairs, you know? They're, maybe they're trying to do a trick on me or, or something. Do you have that problem, or is it just me? No, I have similar problems, yeah. Yeah, I can't see it. Yeah. And I'm, I don't always have my... Uh, you know, three dollar glasses. Yeah, you gotta go find them. Gas station, you know. And the CVS. That's uh, we throw up a little poll question here tonight, where we ask, "Will the person who wins this race be the leader coming out of turn number four here tonight?" You all hear us talk about it every time we come to one of these uh, plate tracks, and now time to get your guys's input out there. So definitely. Uh, oh, what happened with the? The seven spun under caution and smacked the inside wall. Uh, that might be worth a. Let's see. Tristan, what happened to Tristan here? Tristan caught. I don't know. Missing half of his truck already. I think he did that on his own. Oh, jeez, I don't don't, shit don't know something. what happened there. Well, that truck might be done. I, I would uh, I would believe so. Could also be a case of uh, I don't know if he's got any animal pets or anything, but some, he's uh, trying to save fuel. Goes to goes to just dump the clutch to uh, coast and get the engine back going, and uh, animal sitting on his pedal, or he's not watching which pedal he's pushing. Cats do that type of stuff. Oh yeah, well they they'll knock your full glass of precious metal straight off the court you know straight off the counter because that's a cat yeah cats are a trip you know i really think that cats if they were big enough they would murder you in your sleep they would take your breath and just kill you i mean look what the big cats do it's the same thing but in a larger scale Nobody thinks that. Nobody's scared of cats like me. Or, I mean, eh. I like looking at the cute little my, kitten videos, but I'm still yeah, scared my, of them. My wife doesn't like cats. She just, she's afraid of cats. They scare. They scare me. I'm not gonna lie. Well.
before we uh, get this party restarted like a cat on a hot tin roof, let's go ahead and tell everybody what the rules of a green-white checker finish are. We're going to get back going to the green flag here in about half a lap and get everybody all back on up to speed. If the leader at that time crosses the uh, start-finish line one lap afterwards and takes the white flag, we're going to race this one on out to the very end no matter what shenanigans happens anywhere throughout the field it's just a race to the line and whoever can get there first whether they've got a full truck or missing three of their wheels but if the yellow flag comes out before the leader crosses that start finish line we get to re-rack and stack and do it all over again as we got ourselves some green white checker racing here from talladega tonight the 23 and the 6 are going to line on up side by side with the 29, the 99, the 14, 13, 8, 42, 32, and the 5. All up inside of this top 10, but we can go even further back to uh, try to figure out who might possibly win this one, especially with all the uh, chaos. As a uh, majority of people saying, yeah, they don't think the winner is going to be the leader coming out of turn number 4. As the pace truck peels off down and into the safety of a pit road with the uh, field going right on by. Which means it is time to buckle on up, strap on those drinking helmets and throw inhibition out the window. Green flag racing here from Talladega racing to see who can cross that start finish line up first as the 23 gets a good shove from the 99 on the outside lane the 6 getting a fantastic shove from the 29 the rest of the field trying to fill in the holes the 29 looks to the bottom side leaves the 6 completely free and clear in the air that's allowing that bottom side to try to pick up some big time runs you can see the 14 machine starting to close in on some of those gaps as a big shuffle inside outside left side right side they go everybody trying to find a hole trying to find a home for their race truck here tonight yeah it's getting really packed here as these guys go through three and four everybody knows if we take the white here it's over Oh, as one's oh, going no, in no. through the grass, is something going to come out? It is not. Oh, more wrecking behind the leaders. White flag comes out. Did the yellow oh, come no. out in time? It did, it did not. not. Oh, or, the, it did not. That was so close. That was weird. So we get to re-rack and do this one uh, all again. I believe maybe, parts all over maybe the two track. more times after. Wow. That's the 89 uh, struggling to get back through the uh, infield grass. I think uh, I'm wondering why the 99 of Henderson is still going so fast with Grote, you know, hot on his heels. But uh, yeah, we get to. Re-rack and do this one all over again, as we can see. Oh, man, the three getting all twisted, turned sideways. We got that uh, truck coming up through the grass. Oh, the 15, I think he gets sandwiched there on that bottom side, which sends him up the racetrack into the three and collecting uh, quite a few drivers there. And they were like inches from crossing the line when that happened. Uh... So, man, that uh, that poor uh, flag waver guy had to uh, change hands very quickly. So, I'm looking. I'm seeing guys go across the finish line before I see yellow lights going off. I don't know what that means. I guess it doesn't matter, but... Uh, looking at now but well i don't think they were on the final lap so i you know but the, I, wouldn't what i'm saying is i think they took the white before see they that's took what the I white but they didn't hit the final the final lap so it was pre green white checkered that's why that went down that way just saying you know i'm doing math and stuff that's a 99 of Anderson is uh, waiting for the uh, pace truck with uh, 
D. Allen Grote. Uh, we got the 29 of Phil Ellis here falling right to, right behind the pace truck as we get things all figured on out. I, yeah, I don't know. that. I, I To be honest, though, this, this is the closest we've ever seen an incident happening where they were getting ready to take the white flag that uh, that we have yet to see and how uh, how i racing handles that so uh, i think that's possibly yeah, where I, some of the confusion I, is coming from the first couple of trucks look like they crossed the uh start finish line before we switched over to a yellow but i i don't know well again it it could be I'm trying to think on the technical side of things that this that the simulator was registering the yellow and the white at the same time and trying to decide which has precedence and at the time it was it was preparing for the white so it initially started throwing the white but the yellow uh, takes precedent over it trying to like in encode like yellow overrides right, yeah. white or whatever. Again, I'm just it, talking out my butt. I don't really know, but in 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 a real life situation, they would wind the tape back and look at the nose of the lead truck and find out where it was when the yellow lights were activated and started flashing. You're saying this is in real life? D DW isn't. Uh taking the leg off and, and looking at the computer real hard and rewinding stuff? Well, this is, this is all on iRacing to do the scoring and the oh and the stuff, but yeah, whoever's up there, whether they have both where is or Where or is up there? And who's uh, up there? I think there? it's in Boston. Yeah, who's up there? That's the main but question. It's, it's, it's computers. It's not really people. Oh, there. so like the AI thing, so they're going to take over just like everybody else, huh? Sure. I see what's going on here. Sure, we can go that direction. <laughs> you don't even, you don't even <laughs> want to engage. You don't even, don't even want to engage. Well, I, already, I know where it's going to go. I already know. Yeah, it's, that's fine. <laughs> so a bunch of Southies are running a computer. Uh, yeah. Like, like they got I some mafia. It out. A bunch of servers somewhere in a warehouse and AIs in there. And that's what that's what we're doing here. Got it. But the lights are out on the pace truck. We're about to restart again. Well, well, the first of uh, three possible green white checkers there, Turner. Uh, we get the, Thank God. Uh, we're going to have, we might even have some more banged up trucks here tonight, uh, plus EV racing. Because uh, we got uh, three more chances at a green white checker here. Yeah, we got uh, plenty of availability here tonight as the field gets ready to head on back and do it all over again. Coming out of turn number four, Albert Anderson, D. Allen Grote going to start off side by side. Phil Ellis, Tate Cawthorn, D.W. Double O. Joe, A.J. Evangelista, Chris Jordan, Skyler Herod, John Luke Wilkie. All up inside this top 10. Paul Durkee, Kevin Winker, Dylan Bryant, not too far out of it either. Can they make up some spots here in these final few laps? Oh, is Albert Anderson getting a little blink action going on? As they enter that Geico restart zone, and here we go. Phil Ellis was ready to go. Oh, as same was the 71, but he spins the tires, goes down into pit lane, as the green flag flies here once again. 99 being pushed by the 29, eager to go. Tracking. John Luke Wilkie spinning across the track. That brings out a yellow. He took somebody with him there, too, as well. Yeah, I'd say uh, AJ Evangelista Lista says his shifter had a mistake. Yeah, he was, he was going, and then he wasn't right in front of the 72 when he gets ping-ponged. Uh, oh, goodness. 88 gets spun around as well. So we're going to rack it up and do it again there, uh, Alan. Uh, yeah, that we are. Let's. I want to see what happened here with the 71 machine. 
Oh, there was a it was a, the back side of the action was a little slow to get going, and he gets bumped uh, fairly hard in the rear and spins into the grass. Does eventually rejoin the racetrack, and uh, was uh, able to avoid all of that. As and we the truck that, go ahead, the truck that clipped him looks like he was trying to move to the outside to avoid him, but it was too late. Yeah, it's just uh, whew. just one of those. Just one of those things, and yeah, we're, we're going to our uh, attempt number two at this uh, GWC. And if uh, if they can't uh, get it done this time, we got one more shot at it. I have a feeling that uh, we just might need that third one. I mean, I hope not because we Wait. yeah we we do it. We, it always gets me nervous when we go to the final one because we want these guys to finish at least you know on have a shot at taking the checker flag to race it on out. It definitely gets uh, more and more exciting as it uh, progresses. Definitely like to see them racing. And not uh, pacing. Yeah. Plus, EV racing saying you and your boys didn't just roll a star market over in Malden for a box of quarters. The hell <laughs> does that mean? <laughs> I I do know, and uh, plus EV, depending on on the uh, time of day and uh, what year it was, my late grandmother would probably given be giving you the side eye. <laughs> Richard Gray is in the YouTube chat. Saying Triple A, what's up, boys? What's up, Richard? The oldest man in I Racing stopping by to say hi in the uh, YouTube chat. Taking a break from some uh, Day Z, no, no doubt. Yeah. Hey, Richard, when are you going to uh, repave uh, some of these tracks for us here? Because some of them could use a little bit of work. Some of them need it. Some of them need it. He need what we need is Richard to go and repave the repave of Atlanta because they did a terrible job with that. I didn't think it was too bad. Hey, he he would get it all smooth. Like he he'd be like, man, look at this quad oval. It 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 it, it ain't rough. It it too rough. We got to smooth well, it out. Richard was there on the crew that redid Charlotte. He was there when they repaved Charlotte. Well, and so, you see, Charlotte's good. Yeah. His crew did a great job. For y'all that don't know, uh, Richard Gray, uh, that races on here, also works uh, uh, construction and and uh, working on the highway and stuff. But his company and and him personally went out and did the repave of Charlotte a few years ago. I think. Uh... I was seeing recent photos. I think were they repaving um, Sonoma? I have no I, idea. I forget what track I saw, but they were working. Uh, they they were working some track here recently, and people were making fun of them because the crew that was doing it's been known to <clears throat> not put souvenirs out there. Yeah. <laughs> We get ready to head on back to the green flag here in just a second. Real fast refill Yahtzee. Be right back. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the uh, verification there, Paul. I knew I, I knew I had saw it on the on the Facebook. So I'm not not a big follower of NASCAR per se, but like to keep up on the uh, shenanigans that goes on. And shenanigans. Oh, the shenanigans. Is that Richard Gray in that, here? That is Richard Gray. God almighty. I missed I knew he was in county. Did they get him out of there? They must have. Or you think he's just doing weekends English or what? I well English just took a uh, refill. Oh well what do you think? You think he's doing Richard, are you doing just weekends now in county or are you Nah. They they got him on the on the chain gang now, you know. Oh, he's out there making highways, isn't yeah. he? He's good at that, so he's got a skill. 
Sweet. It'll be all right. So we get ready to get back to the green flag. Something is worrying me up here, up at that front, and that is the front end of the double O of Joe Bennett here. That front bumper is uh, looking mighty squished there, Mr. B Mr. Turner. Crazy. I don't know. They've been through a lot so far. It's a long race. It has. I, it's, even the one of DW is uh, looking a little smashed up, too, so the aerodynamics might cause... Uh, might cause a few problems out there. Go ahead, Mr. English. As, as long as they stay behind the guys that are in front of them, they'll be fine. If they're trying to lead a line or get some clean air, then that's going to be a problem. They just need to tuck in behind. It should be okay. As the field comes out of four here, once again, a pace truck making that dive on down for pit road and we get ready to head on back to the green flag here once again for attempt number two of a green white checker race and here from the num thumbs racing league super speedway series race here from talladega side by side goes the 99 and the 29 into that geico restart zone and here we go green flag racing once again the 29 putting the hammer down but getting a little squirrely there you can see the double o of joe bennett just tucking right up into that back bumper trying to get that high side going meanwhile down there on the bottom side 99 and the 14 tag teaming well together you also got the 98 oh 14 down onto the apron just a little bit getting a little squirrely got some push the pusher action everybody's got to wash watch out here as that 29 gets a huge shove from the double o of joe Bennett as here comes the 42 round the outside round the outside look who's back again riding the coattails here the 13 of the old man of Paul Durkee yeah those two mm. sticking together really well let's see if they get any help it looks like the 51's coming up behind oh man what a tight pack we've got up front and you ain't a kidding here as we come back the wire for home. White flag is out. This one will do it no matter what happens. Racing this one on out to the very end as the 99 of Anderson with some help from the 14 of Grote make their way on the bottom side through the exit of turn number two. And now down that long back stretch of straightaway. We got that 29 still getting big time pushed by the double O of Joe Bennett. Not quite able to keep that room in momentum going through turns three and four though that's allowing the 99 14 and even the 98 of tate cawthorn to start to run away here on that bottom line at the exit of turn number four albert anderson stuck on his own not until the 98 peaks his head on down there leaving the 14 out to dry helping to push the uh, 99 of america drivers home Woo! we've got Whoa. ourselves a finish nice my goodness cawthorn took second in that and we're going to get to talk to Mark Collins as well as he takes third. Wow. Albert thought, actually won the thing coming out of four. So prove me wrong. I thought for sure that uh, we're going to have some folks make another run there. As we take a look back here at the checkered flags finish, we're going to go ahead and jump up to the chopper camera and break this one on down as... Uh, Man, this, uh, everything had to go right for Anderson, and it did as the field was breaking out of turn number four. You could see the 98 drifted up with the 14. It looked like the 98 wanted to go to the far outside lane himself to try to pick up a run and maybe pick up the win, but saw the 14 going up there. So he made his way back down behind Anderson, giving him that final extra shove to get back around the 14 meanwhile you have the three sneaking his way on down trying to maybe squeeze an extra position down on the apron gets caught on up maybe with a little bit of an off center push gets a little spin -a rooney the 14 continued to lose spots as the 23 snuck on home there in third and that is why you make frenemies here at talladega You never know who's going to help you push to the win and uh, who's going to leave you high and dry. That was... Uh, 
I don't. I, if Alan Grote would have just stayed where he was at, I think he would have. Yeah, he would almost guaranteed have a have a second. Yeah, second or third, depending on what the outside line was doing. Instead, he'll slip to fifth. And then the, they had some uh, uh, contact after the flag, but that doesn't matter, you know. The die was cast at that point. <laughs> Congratulations, already starting to pour in for Albert. He's a Laura popular Ball guy. And, uh, and uh, Bruce over there, tower operator. Very popular man. I mean, he's one of my favorites. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to y'all. Y'all know he's one of my Fun favorites. Fun to watch. I, I love watching. I love watching these guys like Mark Collins that we see every week. And uh, get we close. Get, we don't get to talk to him as much as we should, and we're gonna yeah. get to talk to him tonight. I can't wait. Up 15. That's awesome for him. And, and I mean, look at Tate Cawthorn, your second place driver here tonight, up 26 spots to finish there in second. So Cawthorn, man. Was able to uh, pick up uh, quite a few spots on the day. Got a couple people up twenty plus spots tonight. Having some. It's one of those tracks where you runs. can do that, you know. Yeah, well, we uh, wait for these drivers to uh, join us up here in uh, in the podium chat. Let's take a quick. Oh, well, never mind. I was gonna say uh, take a quick step aside, but they're starting to uh, show on. Do it. Show on up so we can start tonight's uh, driver interviews with tonight's uh, second place finisher <laughs> and the driver who uh, changed the course of this race's finale, the 98 of uh, Tate Cawthorn, your hard charger of the race, coming on home in second place here tonight. Tate, congratulations on the second place finish. And boy, oh boy, was that a bold strategy, Cotton, tucking right back into line with Albert, but it definitely paid on off. Yeah, um, man, that was, there, there was a lot going on there. I had a, I had a teammate, he was running the outside line, uh, Phil, and shout out to my team, uh, Beer Money Racing, and or only Phil's, as I'm, as I'm sure you're seeing on the back of a lot of the cars. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was, that's been a good running joke now this season. Uh, but yeah, uh, I had a, I had a choice. I could have gone, I could have gone either way. Uh, I don't know. I think it was uh, Allen, 14 car. That he went, he went high. I had a huge run. I just honestly, I trusted Albert a little bit more. I, I, I was gonna, I was, I wasn't lifting until I saw a guy to the checkered flag, and I did not lift going into the back, Albert. And I'm, congratulations to him on the win. I'm just glad we could bring it, bring it home, uh, bring it home second place. Well, Tate, what you know, we've been waiting a while to talk to you again, and that number ninety eight, uh, 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 what's it, soda. Soda, Soda Factory. Yeah, this is actually a uh, fun story. This is a uh, Ty Majeski's uh, truck that he runs in the truck series. Oh, okay. So, um, and I got the, and I got the the opportunity uh, to meet him and do some do some work with him in his super late model. So, oh, so it's a uh, it's awesome. It's awesome to get to run his to run his scheme. Well, and, and you're gonna take this truck uh, to I Racing Super Speedway next week. Uh, that place is just a, it's a crap shoot. It's insane <laughs> there, man. And, uh, it's, it's a, it's a track where we should probably see many deaths, but, uh, thank <laughs> goodness they never really built that place. But, uh, uh, you and the team got a little plane going in there. You just kind of survive and try to wing it. Um, well, I mean, I, it's, it's no, it's no, it's no shock what we did this race. Uh, we all, we all ran in the back. I mean, I'm sure you saw me. I was in the, Oh, yeah. I was in, I was in probably twenty twenty fifth place for I'd say from lap one to about lap fifty, and then once that last caution came out, we all made the decision as a team to go. And I'm sure we're gonna save that faster pair again. We're gonna go into about twenty to go, and then then you'll see see Beer Money race and make their way towards the front. I'm I'm confident going into I racing. We all want we all had a very bad race at I racing that we want back, and we're going in with vengeance as a team. Well, you. You had a good run tonight, up 26 damn spots. I can't really listen because everybody's there's some arguing going on in the uh, actual iRacing show, which I love, a little fighting going on, but that's fine. 
Oh. Yeah, Albert. <laughs> Albert got a Albert got a black flag cleared. I'm not. There's no thrown under the bus. I don't. I honestly honestly don't know what happened, but yeah. I think that's that's what the commotion is about. Um, okay. But I don't. I didn't see anything wrong from what from what I've heard so far. Whatever. At the end of the day, whatever DW and and NTRL makes is the call. That'll be the call. If they disqualify him and I take the win, then I take the win. If I pushed Albert to a win and nothing happens, then I'll take go home second place happy. <laughs> there you go. Who'd you like to give some shout outs to? Uh beer money racing. I mean, without without a lot of those guys today, I mean. I got a I got a lot of a lot of good pushes from a lot of my teammates Tristan, AJ, Phil, uh, Dylan, uh, Nick, uh, Garrett, Ian. Ian was in he was in both of the first wrecks. His car was junked and he still finished just outside the top twenty. So extra shout out to him, uh, Garrett and Ian, two new guys this week. Um, Garrett uh, had some some family issues come up, which kind of made his his race ending abrupt. But but Ian had a good showing. But yeah, I mean. Beer money and and you guys here at AAA, everything NTRL does I mean, without without everybody, man. There there's no racing, so it's just it's awesome to have this opportunity. Awesome, man. Well, big congratulations to the '98 machine, your hard charger of the day, of 26 spots to finish home in second place, Mr. Tate Cawthorn Moore. Tate Cawthorn, man, congratulations and uh, good luck coming up next week over there at IRSS. Thanks, y'all. Thank you guys again. That we will move our way down a step for a quick moment and talk to the Mac Daddy, Mr. Mark Collins, driver of the 23 machine, bring it on home with a drag race across the line to finish here in third. Mark, congratulations on the third place finish. It was a hard, hard fight for you and the uh, NTG racing team here tonight. Yeah, I lost all my help a couple laps before that so i was up there by myself i didn't know what was going to happen and i got spun through the infield a little bit and then luckily somehow i just went where there was no cars and finished third <laughs> that's what it takes you go where they ain't you know and and it worked out for you uh i hate it when people say well you know this is a this is a uh you know a pack racing track and anybody can win and he, that's that's why he did that Mark, we've watched you race for a long time. You've been consistently, uh, you know, safe out there and and took care of your car and and, and truck in this case, and uh, uh, you know, just great job out there. It's 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 paying off, brother. And uh, picking up a third here tonight, it's good to talk to you. Yeah, definitely going to help in the standings. Yeah. Well, who'd you like to give some shout outs to, man? Everyone over here at NTRL, everybody for coming out to race, that y'all for put, putting on the broadcast. Um, yeah, it's been a fun ride, right? This NTRL league. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, congratulations on this third place finish here tonight, Mac. Uh, definitely a good drive in there, and good luck with the uh, rest of the season coming on up here, buddy. Thank you. And with that, we head on up to the top step of this podium here for the evening with America's driver. He started up at the front. He's finishing up here up at the front. Mr. Albert Anderson with the big time win, man. Congratulations, Albert. Uh, just continuing and continuing this super speedway prowess that you've started to build on up. And, man, it's showing itself here once again tonight. Ooh, boys, what a wild race. That was, uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to go brew some Folgers coffee after that one. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, there's a bunch of guys arguing afterwards and, you know, all kinds of good stuff. I got the audio saved for Adam. And, uh, yeah, it was a good night, man. Started <laughs> on a pole and, uh, you know, still got my fast repair and you didn't get involved in any wrecks. So it was a good night. Well, to put things into perspective for the folks that were watching out there, you know, uh, that last restart happened, and you had a passing under under yellow thing that happened, and like six or seven cars or trucks in this case got black flags for passing, uh, and uh, most of the time when that kind of thing happens, they're, they're they're usually all cleared. But you know, it's kind of a case by case thing. So I mean, not taking away from your win there, buddy, but. Uh, yeah, sometimes that happens, and most of the time, these are penalties that are iRacing glitch kind of things that are incurred, 
But uh, yeah. yeah, man. He, so I mean, you know, on on that deal, I was behind Kevin Winker, which was in front of me, and behind Dylan, and I didn't get anything on the screen that said "let anyone buy," and the pace car was out ahead of me, and the pits were open. So you know, it 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 had to have been an eye racing glitch or something like that popped up because I didn't pass anybody. You know, I was behind the person that was in front of me when the caution came out, and I was in front of the person that was behind me when the caution came out. So, you know, DW and the whole admin team here do a fantastic job at reviewing the races and going over in them and, uh, you know, making sure, you know, nothing was done. If, um, if it was something on me, which I don't think it was, but if it was, you know, I'll get an EOL and I'll have to start in the back next week. But, um, you know, I have total confidence that, uh, the admin team will find me innocent. Well, you know, they're trying to make America guilty till proven innocent. But we know the facts. <laughs> it's innocent till proven guilty, and I think you're innocent, but I really didn't pay much attention to that little aspect of the race. But good job tonight. Congrats. Uh, America's driver. Uh, another victory, man. Congrats. Who'd you like to give some shout-outs to? Yeah, it's great to be back in uh, victory lane. And first of all, Adam, I want you to take this this trophy home. Usually I give the trophies to Lori, but I'm going to give yeah. this one to you this week, uh, uh, Adam, and put it on your put it on your trophy shelf there. I will. Um, heck yeah, That's brother. And, um, you know, first of all, I want to thank Tate Hawthorne. Um, he gave me a big push there at the end. Um, if he wasn't there, hooked in my bumper. Uh, Mark would have got me on the outside. So a big shout out to Tate Hawthorne. I, I really couldn't have won that one uh, without him. And, um, you know, all the NTRL sponsors, Sim Gear Central, DEP Graphics, Davidson Builders, um, DW, the league owner, him, Mark, all of the admin guys do a fantastic job um i'm in the admin and i'm not just kissing butt because they're reviewing my case but uh, they really do do a good job all my teammates at all star racing here at the ntrl side um dylan bryant kevin winker best teammates in the world all of my fans out there love you guys thank you for tuning in and uh the broadcasters man you you guys are phenomenal I, I can't go to sleep at night after I get done racing because I got to watch the replay and uh, see what my man Adam has to say. So I'm definitely going to be watching this one back. Well, th well, the guys aren't going to like this because I'm going to ask you one more question, and that's usually not uh, what we do here. But I, I saw a picture of you the other day, your first win at Old Dominion, and you know, obviously that was a great moment for you. But so many wins here on iRacing – I mean, do, do you ever get that that same feeling, you know, the feeling of goosebumps and stuff that you got when you got that first win at a real-life track at Old Dominion? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, my, my first win in a real race car, you know, is always going to be special. You know, my, my daughter was there. I think she was four or five at the time. You know, my parents were there. My girlfriend at the time, she was a total smoke show. But, um, you know, and it, you're always going to remember, you know, coming across the checker and parking it in victory lane, you know, in, in real life. But I tell you what, man, these iRacing wins really hold up to it because, I mean, you feel good every time, you know, you can win when, when you're the best in the field and, and you're the class of the field in a race and you win. It's a great feeling, you know, whether it's real life or in the simulator. So um, I'll take it either way. I, I can take it, and I'm super appreciative for um, every victory I get. Very happy for it, and, and I'm humbled by it. And, and you know, it's 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 a great feeling, man, to be able to 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 win and and do donuts. And uh, you know, that week belongs to you. Awesome, man. Well, big congratulations to America's driver, Albert Anderson, picking up the race win here from Talladega tonight in this Num Thumbs Racing League Super Speedway Series event at Talladega. Man, congratulations. Definitely go on and celebrate it, and we'll see you back in action soon enough here, buddy. All right, guys. Thank you, man. We'll see you tomorrow night. And with that, we close things down here from the Dega. And whoo, boy, oh boy, it was a wild and tumultuous ride out there. It was a lot of fun. This track never disappoints. We always see some, uh, a little bit of controversy and uh, 
a whole lot of fun and uh, a lot of banged up race cars out there tonight. So, yeah, tonight, uh, like any other night here at Dega. Yeah, that indeed it is. As we go ahead and uh, tell everybody where their favorite driver ended up finishing here tonight with that 99 of Albert Anderson. Uh, excuse me, picking up the race win. 98 of Tate Cawthorn, your hard charger of the race. Up 26 spots to finish here in second. 23 of the Mac Daddy, Mark Collins, finding his way on home in third. Up 15 spots on the day with a fantastic run. Got the three of Skylar Herod just missing out on that podium here, finishing in fourth. Then you got the double O of Mr. Uh, hold on a second. No. Who's, who's it saying that it's put in there in, uh, it's, it's, Al, oh, it's, uh, Grote. Alan Grote, yeah. Oh, is yep. it Grote? Yeah, so, uh, the Alan Grote does hang on for a top five uh, finish here tonight, followed up by the double O of Joe Bennett, up 19 spots. Then you got the, uh, only Phil, Phil Ellis, coming on home here tonight in seventh. Then, uh, Mr. Chris Jordan in the 78 machine, having a great run, finishing in eighth, ninth, we'll go to the 51 of Mr. Chris Klein. Saw him up at the front quite a bit here tonight. And the 42 of Kevin Winker hangs on for your field's final top 10 position. Team Machine of Paul Durkey will finish in 11th place, 12th. Dylan Bryant in the eighth. 15 of uh, Vincent Short finishes in 13th place. Uh, up a few spots there in 14th. Connor Leach in the 71. Uh, the one of Derek Welch will finish in 15th place. 16th, AJ Evangelista in the 05 truck. 72 machine of John Luke Wilkie will finish in 17th place. Uh, Caleb Sisk uh, down 16 spots. Disappointing night for Caleb. Uh, he'll finish there in 18th. Uh, 19th will be Gary Sack, the third in the 89. Swash, 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 buckling. What? Swash buckler. I, I don't know. He's a I don't know. Buckler. <laughs> and uh, uh, he finishes the last truck on the lead lap. And then Ian Davis in the 69 machine uh, finishes in 20th. Take it away, Adam. <laughs> Thank you. I will. Thank you. 63, Dave Holmberg, 21st, 22nd, Joe David in the two. Chuck Kiger in the 22 ended up 23rd. 24th. Double Nickel Tom Bears, 31 Machine of Scott Milder, ended up 25th, 26th, number 5, Anthony Williams, the 32 of Nick Biddy, 27th, 28th, Nicholas Tucker. He's got, he's driving a Cubs paint scheme. That can't be good for anybody. He's at 88, the number 88 ended up 28th, 29th, <laughs> number 7 of Tristan Cotton, 19, Brandon Coleman, 30th. 26, Dylan Ritchie, 31st, and Garrett Thompson in the 17. Uh, might have put a few laps in. He ended up 32nd. And that is your field here tonight from Talladega. As always, we thank you all for tuning in and watching because you fans out there are the reason why we do this and have such a good time of doing it. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you get alerted every single time that we go live. And if you do enjoy any of the action, be sure to hit that thumbs up button so we can continue to grow this fantastic community. We also have to say a huge thank you to the proud sponsors of the NTRL, such as Davidson Builders, DEP Graphics, Sim Gear Central, Track Bar Media, Beatles Custom Car Carriers. Of course, I also have to say a huge thank you to the GOATS Race Team and, of course, Mule Burger Custom Homes. All big time thank you to all the proud sponsors of the NTRL. Because uh, without your support, they wouldn't be able to put the show that they do week in and week out on for any of y'all. So, big thank you. Thank you to the sponsors. So with that, we close things on down here tonight. Uh, we do return to action tomorrow for the uh, Numb Thumbs Racing League's uh, Next Gen Cup Series, which, uh, if I find out where the schedule is, 
Uh, we are staying right here. The haulers are staying put. We are coming back to oh. some action here at Talladega in those next-gen uh, cup cars. So we should be uh, having some uh, fantastic times out here in indeed. But uh, until tomorrow night, though, I'm Alan Brown for Alan English and Adam Turner. We are signing off. Swashbuckle. <laughs> See ya.